Kubor Kabate Si TV. Lawan Rasha Pi Daka Frank Motors. The dark is here to rule. Now we come to item number four, short duration discussion. Sri Charles Mar Marngar, MLA to raise a short duration discussion under Rule 50 of the Rules of Procedure and Conduct of Business regarding the news item which appeared in U Nongsa in Hima, dated 23rd March 2023, under the caption, Kno Ba Krong Bai Sinsar Ka Tnat Klao Jong Ka KAC Naki Nongrep Ha Border Block 2. Sri Charles Mangna, please. Mr. Speaker, sir, thank you so much for allowing Mr. me. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, I just want to just take this uh, one moment, sir, before the honourable member would uh, would uh, speak, sir. Sir, as uh, mentioned by one of the senior leaders, that we have the budget discussion, and uh, and obviously, sir, we would like to s that opportunity in the budget discussion gives ample space to raise any issue that you would want, sir. So, hence, uh, in the interest of time, uh, you know, if the honourable member can be very, very short, sir, and I can be also very short in my reply, yeah. uh, or, sir, we can also ensure that uh, he need not proceed with this and he can raise the same issue during his budget uh, speech, sir. So, therefore, sir, time is important, I understand, but management of time also is equally important, sir. So, if we can manage our time better, then obviously we can be more productive from all fronts. So, this is only a suggestion, sir, for your information, sir. Only two, three minutes. Okay, please come. Thank you so much, sir, for allowing me to raise a short direction discussion on the rules 50 of the rules of procedure and conduct of business regarding the news item which appeared in Unong San Hima the 23rd March 2023 under the caption border block two. Mr. Speaker, sir, as a local representative representing the 8 Mahuti constituency, I'm very shocked in having read the newspaper, Unong San Hima, under the caption, Kano Bakrong Bai Sinsar Katana Klao Jong Kakarbi Anglong Autonomous Council Naki Nongrep Block 2, which means that there has been tax collection from Broomstick by the KASC Forest Department in which the collection of tax has been carried out by the private collectors in some of the gates that has been set up by the KASC Forest Department from the villages of Block 2. And this has created lots of problems to the farmers in those <coughs> areas. As per the information from the Sinjuk Kirang Bachnong and as per my personal interaction with the farmer, I found that our people have been facing a lot of difficulties, which they are still expressing the same till date. And this is not only the time that it had happened. I have the evidence with me, and the money received was named as Jaru Mahaldar. Most of our local farmers of those areas depend solely on broomstick for their livelihood. And now it is the season that they sell this broomstick to the market. But unfortunately, our farmers have to pay tax of rupees eight per kg. And when you calculate for one load of broomstick in one Mahindra pickup, the total of tax come up to 15,000 per Mahindra pickup. If this much has to be taxed from the farmers, then it will affect the livelihoods of our poor farmers and the future of the children. In spite of getting benefits and source of income to support the families, they have to pay for the benefit of the collectors and the benefit of the KASC and the state of Assam. If this case still prevails, how will our poor farmer feed the children? How will they support the children's education? If 15,000 per pickup has to be paid, then, sir, I think it will be equivalent up to six, seven months for them to support the basic necessities of the poor farmers in the families. 
What the KASC had done in collecting tax is only about exploitation to our poor local farmers which are residing in those areas. This tax collection done by KASC showed that they had even claimed the ownership on the land and those villages that face on the Block 2 dispute area. Lastly, I urge the state government to kindly look into the matter immediately and seriously as broomstick marketing is still operating every day during this season as to ensure that the safety, security, benefits and welfare of our farmers are well maintained. Last but not the least, I once again request the government of the day to kindly intervene in this matter with the state of Assam so as to stop the Karbi Anglong Autonomous Council for collecting tax from our farmers. With these few words, I resume my seat. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Any member? Uh, due to constraint of time, I would allow you to speak for 10 minutes. Okay, okay, sir. Uh, so I would also like to participate uh, in this uh, short duration uh, discussion. And I'll try to be specific. Instead of asking uh, questions from the government, I will give reply. Why these kind of activities keep happening in the border areas? Atrocities to the people living in the border areas? Because the more the state government, the government of Meghalaya is willing to engage in dialogue with the Assam government, the more the courage they are to encroach and commit into different kind of atrocities. So, sir, I think the government of the day will have to uh, change the approach because it seems that there is also a perception in the mind of the Assam government that these leaders, leaders of Meghalaya, they are not even aware or sure of their own boundary. So, sir, we have heard the reply of the Honorable Chief Minister the other day when we discussed about the border, how they settle these six areas of difference. And when I look at this map, sir, I would like to show this map inside this house, sir, that this map is being published by the government of Italia, and it is noted here that the inter interstate boundary between Meghalaya and Assam. Please help me. So, it is mentioned here in this map, sir, that the interstate boundary between Meghalaya and Assam is shown here in accordance with the definition of subpara 2 of para 20 of the sixth schedule uh, of the constitution. The district boundary of South Garo Hills district has been entered in accordance with government of Meghalaya notification. Number HH, HPL 399 slash 75 slash 157 dated 3rd December 1976 boundary of Bakmara civil subdivision. The district boundary of Ribhoi district has been entered in accordance with the government of Meghalaya notification number HPL 139 slash 8900 dated 4th June 1992. And if you look at this map, sir, you'll find that all those areas which have been claimed by the Assam government are very much inside this map. So if the government is not in possession of this map, which is being published by the government of Meghalaya, I'm ready to hand it over to the government. So therefore, sir, I feel that there is a strong perception in the mind of the Assam government that maybe the leader in Meghalaya, they are not even aware of their own boundary. Maybe this is the reason that, uh, uh, you know, that we have to experience as a state this kind of encroachment and atrocities. So with these few words, sir, I would wish you my seat, sir. Thank you.
Any other participant? If there is no participant, then I request the Chief Minister to reply, please. Mr. Speaker, sir, at the very outset, I would like to thank the Honourable Member, Sri Charles Maranga, for the MLA from Mahati constituency, for tabling this uh, short duration discussion under Rule 50, and the Honourable Member from Nongkrem for participating in it. Sir, again, I, I have a very long reply to this particular issue, but uh, I will not go by the written reply, but I'll try to address the concerns that have been raised by the Honourable Members, sir. Uh, sir, the first point that I would like to make in this entire uh, issue is that the border differences is the reason why this particular situation has come up. So we need to realize as a House and as members that the precise reason and the tension that this particular issue is coming up in the areas of differences and the taxes that the people have to pay is because this border issue has not been resolved for the past 50 years. So what we need to realize and what is ultimately the point that we are all coming to and everything that all the members are saying is we need to ultimately find a solution. And this kind of situations will keep coming up. We'll have different problems coming up and people will face different situations until unless we find a solution. And therefore, the arguments that have been mentioned by the different members is pointing towards the, the fact that the government must, at the end of the day, find a solution to these areas of differences. So before I go into the border part, I'll just talk a bit about the fact that what this entire broomstick issue uh, also and how the government has been very proactive in ensuring that we are able to help the farmers. Sir, number one, it was the MDA-1 government that had uh, classified, or I should say, made sure that the broomstick came out from the classification of a forest product. And by doing that, we have put into an agro-forest-based uh, product which uh, ensures uh, that the taxes or different kind of um, um, provisions with, uh, which are there when it comes to forest products would not be there anymore for the broomstick. So the broomstick would come under the uh, agroforestry product, which would ensure that the people would no longer have to pay anything to government of Meghalaya. Uh, for any kind of movement of their products. So that is a very, very big step that was taken by the MDA-1 government to ensure that uh, we are able to give a big relief to the people of our state. So that's number one, so that the Honorable Member knows that we are very concerned about broomstick farmers and uh, we realize that we need to take concrete steps about it and uh, we have done it as a government, sir. Number two, sir, the different uh, points mentioned regarding the different check gates that are there and uh, the different uh, points where the collection is being done. So the Karbiolong Autonomous District Council has set up four gates in different locations which are in the areas of differences, sir. Now, let me just also, for the knowledge of the House, mention that this is not something that has just happened today or yesterday or last year. This has been going on for a long time, sir. And this is, in fact, again, I come back to the same point, that one of the main reasons why we realize that all these things are creating, and he, has, he himself has mentioned, creating a lot of uh, problems for our farmers, and this needs to stop. And that's precisely the reason why, in spite of all the challenges and difficulties and problems and the different political narratives that have come out in the past, the MDA government has been firm that we need to ultimately find a solution and add to the border issue. 
And therefore, in spite of all the difficulties, sir, we are very, very determined to go ahead and find a solution so that precisely problems like these don't continue. So that people can then live in peace, people are safe, and people are able to do their economic activities as they wish. And hence, sir, based on this, the Deputy Commissioners had met in the month of March 2022 from Karbialong District and from Ribhoi District. And this particular issue of 7 rupees per kg, not 8 rupees, 7 rupees per kg issue had been brought out at the level of the Deputy Commissioner. So this discussion has been going on. This has been informed to the Assam counterpart and uh, to the uh, Deputy Commissioner of the West Karbialong District. And uh, as you are aware, sir, the uh, Karbialong Autonomous District Council is uh, autonomous and hence uh, it's a, a third level of, I mean, uh, uh, government in the sense that we have the Meghalaya government, Assam government, and we have the Kasil's, uh, the Karbialong, I'm sorry, Karbialong Autonomous District Council. We have to speak to them at a separate, separate level. So these discussions are on with all these different stakeholders at different level. And uh, in the next meeting, uh, Honorable Member also is now a member of the Regional Committee. And therefore, uh, these issues will be discussed in those uh, meetings that we have. And uh, we are working hard sir, to ensure that our people uh, don't suffer in this, uh, in this manner. As I said, sir, this is a very complex situation. Uh, different activities take place at different levels. And uh, wherever the steps could be taken from the state, Meghalaya state government side to resolve certain issues have been done. We have taken up this matter in March 2022. So there is precisely one year back, this matter has been taken up with the Assam counterparts. And uh, based on that, uh, we are working hard to ensure that these kind of different issues can be resolved in the days to come, sir. But ultimately, the final solution to this entire issue is going to be based on uh, the final solution to the areas of differences. So the Honorable Member from uh, Nongkrem also had uh, brought out uh, a map, and uh, he has shown that map. I, had not, uh, I could not see it from uh, far, but he read out certain provisions. But sir, that's uh, precisely the point, sir. Uh, he has, uh, in fact, uh, uh, only uh, reaffirmed our stand and uh, he has uh, uh, spoken in favor of the government, and I thank him for that. The point is that government of Meghalaya has always ensured that the maps that we have been given in the past, the claims that we have had, uh, if those areas were not included in it, then it would mean that we have already surrendered those areas to Assam. So obviously, sir, those areas will be shown as our claim in our maps. And that's precisely what we have done. And he has shown that map, so I'm thankful to him. He has only uh, stressed on the point that Meghalaya government is firm on uh, the map that we have given, and we have not surrendered those areas. So that's very, very clear. And this, of course, speaks on the government's stand. So that's a positive thing, sir, number one. Number two, sir, that's... Uh, precisely the reason why we have this issue of areas of differences. Because Assam also claims it and Meghalaya also claims it. So Assam also may, may have it in their map, we also have it in our map. And the fact that we have it in our map shows that we are firm on our stand. But while we are firm on our stand, we also do realize that we need to find a solution to this. And hence, when we talk of the areas of differences, we are now moving forward and finding out, well, what can we do? Assam also has been maintaining this stand for 50 years. Meghalaya also has been maintaining this stand for 50 years. And we can continue to maintain our stand for the next 50 years also. And we can continue to not uh, engage, as the Honorable Member was saying, is that the fact that we are engaging with them is uh, leading to these kind of activities. Sir, uh, we can decide on not to engage. And uh, if we do decide not to engage, I don't see that uh, we'll be able to find or we'll be able to resolve this issue or any other issue, sir. The tension will continue. There may be more incidents where more uh, lives may be lost. There may be more complicated matters that may come up. 
And as I said, uh, and we could continue this for the next 50 or 100 years and just stick to our positions and say, well, let it, whatever happen in the, uh, in, the, in the border areas, let the people of the border areas suffer, let the people of the border areas go through difficult phases, let them pay taxes, but we are not going to find any solution or we are not going to engage with our counterparts. We could go with that solution also, sir. But that is not what we feel is the correct way. So we need to engage. In today's world, in today's uh, the politics that we're having, in the way the situation is today, uh, we need to see how we as people in responsible positions are able to find solutions which are amicable. And sir, I keep maintaining this from day one, sir. It's not an easy decision. It's a very tough decision for us, sir. And we know that we will continue to face a lot of challenges. But as I had mentioned, sir, in the past to all, to all of you and to this house, sir, that every time this situation comes up, at least in front of me, and every time this discussion takes place, sir, sir, I can only see the faces of the people from Block 1, Block 2 area. I can see the faces of the people from Langpi area with tears in their eyes and their voices choking and requesting me again and again saying, please find a solution to this problem. We can't continue living this way. And I urge, I urge the members of this house, sir, visit these areas, talk to these people. You will be able to realize the pain that they go through. And again, as I said, I repeat, so there is no easy solution to this. There is no easy solution to this. And it's very easy for us to try to create different narratives out of this because it's a very sensitive issue. But then as responsible leaders, we need to ask ourselves that is this an issue where we will try to create different narratives and complicate the matter more? Or shall we remember those people living in those border areas and try and do something for them so we can finally find peace in those areas? That's the basic choice we have in front of us. And I choose to find a solution. We choose as a government to engage. We choose to try and wipe the tears of those people living in the border areas. We choose to look forward for the next 50 years and 100 years so that the people, the generations to come ahead will not have to again continue to pay taxes the way that the people are paying today. So the generations in front will not have to lose their lives. This is what we choose, sir. It is not a simple choice for us. I know that a lot of people will bring out a lot of maps and a lot of discussions. But sir, as a government, as I said, we are firm that we will find a solution to this, sir. And hence, no matter what the narratives that may be created, different uh, documents that may be shown, so we are happy to engage. We are happy to discuss. And when I say engage, sir, it doesn't mean engage only with our Assam counterparts. We engage with our people too. We discuss with our people. And yes, I must put this on record, that when we discuss, that does not mean that we'll be able to do everything for everybody. Does not mean that we'll be able to uh, tell everybody, yes, what you have told us will, be, will, be, will happen, or your demands will be met. But that does not mean we didn't engage with them. We will engage and we will try to see to the best of our ability that we move forward in that line. And hence, sir, let me urge the members who are in this house today, the responsible leaders, we have been given a responsibility to be able to take care of our people and our state. We need to make tough choices. It is not easy. And that's why 60, only 60 members are elected to this house. Because we have to make those tough decisions. As I said, not easy, but somebody has to do it. And that's why we've been elected to do it. And therefore, so we must keep the larger picture in mind. We must realize, as I said, that people have been suffering for too long. And hence, sir, all the points mentioned by all the members, sir, I have noted them down. The maps that have been shown, maybe I can... He was saying that a copy will be given, sir. We have the copy with us. That's not an issue. But as I said, him showing the map, the honorable member showing the map, only reiterates the stand of the government 
that we are clear that yes, these areas have not been surrendered as of now to Meghalaya or uh, to Meghalaya from the Assam side, or has been uh, you know agreed to give to Assam from the Meghalaya side. So we have not come to any agreement. Our stand is very clear that yes, these are the maps of Meghalaya and these are the areas that come under Meghalaya. This is our stand, and that is what's been reiterated by the honourable member. But while we do that, Assam also has a different map where the areas of differences are there. And hence, obviously, sir, because of these differences, we are sitting and discussing on how to resolve them. And because of the areas of differences that are coming up, all these border issues and tensions that are there, whether it's road constructions or development issues are hampered, whether the safety and security of the people is hampered, the taxes that are being collected is being done, these are all outcomes of this particular problem. And that's the reason why I keep stressing that no matter how difficult it is, we need to take a decision. We need to be responsible and find a solution. And that is the only way for us to be able to permanently resolve these issues and ensure that in the future, in the next 50 years, 100 years, none of the citizens of our state will have to go all through all these different difficulties that they're facing. So that is exactly what we're trying to do. But I do thank the honorable member for raising this particular issue. And as mentioned, sir, in the month of March 2022, in the official meeting that took place between the DC of Ribhoi and of West Karbelong district, this issue was brought out, this was discussed, and this matter is being examined very, very uh, seriously. And uh, definitely the honorable member himself will, I'm sure, bring out this topic when we meet as regional committees along with the two chief ministers. And uh, I will also bring out this issue and we will try to find a solution to this so that the people of the border areas uh, do not suffer uh, when it comes to these different kind of uh, uh, taxes that are being collected by the Karbi Along Autonomous District Council. Sir. So with these uh, few clarifications and with these few words, I would like to resume my seat, sir. Uh, from you, that after minister replied, there is no provision that... Uh, uh, the member can ask for any other clarification. Huh? Okay. I think there is provision, sir. If now we come to item number five. Sir, excuse me, sir. We know that there is a provision, okay. sir, to uh, you can seek some clarification. Yeah, yeah. Sir, I would like to thank to the honourable chief minister for the reply. Yes, why I brought this short duration discussion is to specific discuss about the problem faced by our farmers. Yes, I know that the government of Meghalaya is trying to find solution. But to find solution, it will take time. So what I want to discuss today and request the government of the day See, sir, while the government of Meghalaya and Assam, while the settlement of interstate boundary is going on, the agreement both the state is to maintain status quo. Sir, why only people of Meghalaya so far? This is my question. And I have one request for my people in my constituency, sir. Just for the farmers, for the tax collection from the Karbi Anglong Autonomous Council. I have one request, sir. This is the request from my people in my constituency. I have one request to kindly take any step and talk with the government of Assam to stop the tax collection for broomstick. I want the assurance from the Honorable Chief Minister to talk with the Assam government and especially with the Karbi Anglong Autonomous Council, sir. This is my humble request, sir. Specifically, only for the farmers, sir. Sir, I thank the Honorable Member uh, for bringing this issue out. Uh, sir, I just want to again clarify that uh, we are not saying that we're going to wait for the final settlement for this issue to be resolved. We are just say, I am saying that we need 
the resolution and the final solution so that permanently these issues are resolved. So that is my number one clarification. Number two, sir, we have already initiated the discussion at the, uh, the DC level in the, in the month of March 2022 on this particular subject, apart from so many other issues going on at different levels, the discussions are going on. And since the Honorable Member has mentioned this now in this meeting, uh, in, this, uh, in the August House, I'm sorry, in the August House, uh, I have mentioned, sir, that he is also now a member of the Regional Committee. So definitely, we will take this matter up with the Assam counterpart so that they can take up with the Karbi Long Autonomous District Council. And we are able to find a solution to this. I cannot say whether the solution will be done or not done because it's a very complex matter. And uh, another government, uh, so the, speaking, the Karbi Long Autonomous District Council is involved. So we need to work on that also while we do that, sir. And at the same time, the way the reforms have taken place in the state government, since the Honorable Member is also an MDC. So I would urge that uh, in the District Council also they can take similar reforms so that uh, the TPs that are being corrected now from the farmers, which is again something that the state government now has completely uh, removed. So the Honorable Member is a MDC and he's been MDC now for four years. Uh, so maybe he can take steps to ensure that the taxes that are being collected by the Khasil's Autonomous District Council can also be looked into. I understand that the Khasil's Autonomous District Council requires revenues, but while we talk of the tax collection from Karbi along, uh, maybe steps can be taken also at the uh, KHADC level, and we can figure out on how we could reduce the burden that is there on the farmers uh, even further, sir. So uh, we will take up the matter, sir. So I, I thought that this is a good opportunity to also mention to uh, the Honorable MLA, who's also an MDC, that uh, he could take up this matter at the Kassil's Autonomous District Council. Thank you. Hello, sir. I have already sent a letter to the Chief Executive Member of Kassil's Autonomous Kassil's Autonomous District Council to intervene the same. And one more, uh, I just want to clarify that uh, the tax collection has been increased to eight per kg, sir. This one also, I just for the information of the Honorable Chief Minister. Yeah. Yeah. We come to item number five. <clears throat> sir, I have not... Uh, uh, sir, I think I need to. Yeah. I think I need to clarify that uh, when we raised this issue inside this other house, we are not here to create a narrative to aggravate the situation, sir. But after having observed, you know, the the action on the part of the Assam side, we fail to understand while Assam Meghalaya government is respecting to maintain the status quo, to maintain that negotiation between the two states. The Assam government does not respect at all. The Assam government will come inside Meghalaya and carry out some construction work, and they will prevent the state of gov the, the, the government of Meghalaya to carry such works. So therefore, sir, I think it is not right on the part of the Chief Minister, Honorable Chief Minister, to doubt about the intention. And I never raised this issue only inside this house. In fact, I've traveled throughout the, <coughs> the boundary. I know the feeling, like it has been coming up, the people whom have been, uh, you know, gone to Assam now, that they are ready even to shed their blood, but they will not accept the decision taken by the government. Which is why, sir, I think it is not right on the part of the chief minister to doubt the intention of the honorable member who raised this issue inside this house, sir. We are not here to create a narrative that will aggravate the situation or a narrative that will help us politically. We are not here to play politics, okay. sir. Okay. Sir, uh, again, the honorable member's points are, again, not going in the factual line. Uh, again, a narrative is being created. Sir, uh, I, I need time, sir, now, because the sense has been mentioned, sir. Uh, sir, in Ribhoi, MBT of approach road from Jatalong to Lumiaknia, which is being done under the border area development by the state government. So construction is going on as we speak, even though there's an area of differences. So it's not that uh, Assam is, Meghalaya is not doing our work in there. We are doing our work. And it's going on from both sides. Uh, so that's just one road I mentioned. 
the L049 construction of road from Baklapara to uh, Junbari, Junbari Gaon, uh is going on right now. It's being done by PWD, sir. That work is going on, by, doing, being, being done by Meghalaya in the areas of differences. So construction of road from Pahamshru to Ranibari, this work is going on, being done by Meghalaya government, sir. Construction of community hall at Unru, this work also was going on, sir, but of course there were certain concerns. And uh, then uh, some side uh, complained regarding this, and so discussions are going on, like sometimes Meghalaya complaints also. Uh, and uh, similarly, this kind of confusions are there, but this also work was started, sir. Uh, then after that, um, the uh, mission uh, Sakskam Anganwadi and portion, sir, construction of Anganwadi Center uh, at uh, Madan Umwang. Uh, this also, sir, is going on as we speak, sir. Um, so like that, sir, Madam Umwang W work water supply scheme augmentation of Mausla Jam water supply scheme of uh, Sabuda water supply. So, so many water supply schemes around Rib Riboy, many areas within Meghalaya and some are areas and the differences that are there. Uh, my point being, sir, that it's not, uh, we should not give that narrative that uh, only Assam is active in these areas, Meghalaya is not, uh, is, uh, is observing this, uh, you know, this kind of thing and we are going back completely and we are not doing any activity. Sir, activities are going on from both sides. Both the state governments are doing activity and that's the reason why tension comes up. And many works are, when we Meghalaya does, the Assam counterpart stops it. Many works that when Assam does it, Meghalaya counterpart stops it. That is the reason why these kind of differences and uh, this kind of aggravation uh, happens in the border areas. So saying that we are respecting it and we are not moving forward in it and we are completely letting go and letting Assam take full control, so that is not true at all. That's what I'm trying to say. Sir. So let's not create that kind of a narrative where we are saying that uh, Meghalaya government is, uh, is not uh, active in this area. So we are active. We are doing our developmental work. Uh, from both sides, it's happening. And that is the reason why the tension builds up. Uh, in fact, these areas of differences which are there, if uh, you look at it from the point of view, the people who are there, they are cultivating. These are people from Meghalaya who are going and they are staying there and cultivating these areas and are getting the product out from there. So therefore, we are having our activities. Assam also may come in and start saying that, well, you cannot farm at all out here, which happens in some cases. So this is the kind of tension that keeps going on and back and forth. And that's the reason why I was saying that uh, we should not just create a narrative that is one-sided. There are problems, there are concerns, we need to find a solution to it. But we need to realize that it's from both sides. Both sides are having activities there. Both sides are moving forward there. Both sides are doing development. And both sides try to stop the development also. And that's really the reason why ultimately the only way to, for us to come out of this is to find a final solution and an understanding to this complex problem is what I'm trying to say. Sir.